Hi everyone, welcome to another week, another Monday academic video. This one is all about the benefits of becoming an FHEA. So if you're thinking of teaching at a university here in the UK, it can be a really good idea to belong to the HEA. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Caroline. I'm a UK-based physics lecturer. If you are returning as a subscriber, it's great to have you within our academic team. Basically then, for jobs at university here in the UK where you're going to be doing teaching, so that could be the lecturer to senior lecturer to reader to professor route, or maybe you're looking at joining a university and you want to specialise in teaching, so maybe you're thinking about the teaching pathway. In either of those cases, because you're doing teaching at the university, it can be a really useful thing to get is a fellowship of the Higher Education Academy. When I started teaching at university, I was going to belong to the HEA, which is the Higher Education Academy. Now, in 2018, they merged with the Leadership Foundation and an Equality Challenge Unit actually became the a kind of an organisation called Advance HE. So I'm going to include a link to Advance HE. But essentially, this is now the organisation that is looking at improving standards and raising training and awareness so that everybody working in the higher education sector has a good experience, be you a student or be you a member of staff. When I joined my university, one of the key things was that new academics were asked to go through a training programme to become a fellow of the Higher Education Academy. Um, now, this is a very useful thing to do if you're a new academic and you've not been maybe engaged in university teaching before. It's also really useful if you're changing sector. So although I had completed an awful lot of public speaking in industry, I hadn't necessarily given formal lectures to a bunch of students. So actually going through this training course was a really good way of bridging that gap from industry into academia. And this training course was just part of my job. So, you know, I, I had to say that I was going to do it. I had to enrol on the course, but then my university actually paid and supported me as I did this training programme. To become a fellow of the Higher Education Academy, there's two routes. You can either do it through an accredited programme led by your university, which is the route that I did, or you can apply directly. So you can put together a portfolio of your evidence and your skills and apply directly to become a fellow of the HEA. What did this training programme entail? It was actually quite involved and it was quite long. Um, so I think it lasted the best part of a year and a half and I had to undertake four modules. Module one, exploring the learning environment. Module two, so that's theory and practice of teaching. Module three, understanding the curriculum. And module four, education research. And within each of these modules, there were a mix of tasks. So I always had tutorials, um, and I can talk a little bit more about those. And then for each module, there were specific activities. Some of these were undertaken as a group. So I was working with other academics going through this training programme, and some of them were individual pieces of study. And the Advanced HE, so this Advanced Higher Education Organisation, they are linked to the UK Professional Standards Framework. So I know this video is full of you know, lots of terms, but again, I'll pop a link in the kind of description box below. It's worth having a look at the UK Professional Standards because essentially, as I went through this one and a half year course, these were the standards that I needed to evaluate myself against and to consider my teaching, my teaching best practices, and how I was going to develop as a higher education lecturer. Let me dive in a little bit more into each of the four modules. In module one, so this is my first module as part of this training programme, I had to do an annotated bibliography, a personal action plan, and attend a series of course tutorials. I was given some freedom in the course tutorials. There were some certain ones that I had to go to, and then I could pick which of the ones I wanted to go to out of the kind of university offered programme. And then my two big tasks for module one were an annotated bibliography, and that was very much reading and looking at the research around education and learning and evaluating four or five other documents or kind of video clips on the internet 
um, and assessing them with relation to these UK professional standards. And I also needed to do a personal reflection where I looked at where I, where I was with my teaching, what I was planning to do with my teaching going forwards and any areas that I particularly wanted to focus on. Well, after successfully passing module one, module two was quite a lot of fun because there was an element of group work. I had a group presentation where I worked with a team of other people on the course and we evaluated a part of teaching. So we were looking at how you can use um, materials during a lesson to help provide a student with feedback on their progress. Um, and we recorded a video, we did some role plays of how the teaching experience was from both an academic and a student perspective. Um, and then we evaluated ourselves with some other people from the course. So that was quite good fun. I also had to do a micro teach. Um, and I could do a whole separate video on micro teaching. Essentially, it's a five minute quick kind of class that you give where you are trying to convey a skill or a piece of knowledge to somebody, but quite quickly. Um, and again, you can choose in this course what we wanted to teach. So actually, although I am a nuclear physicist, I decided it would be fun to teach balloon modeling. So in, in my micro teach, I gave a five minute lesson on how to make a balloon animal. Um, and then I also had to write a self-reflection where I looked at an assessment of my own teaching role. So I guess that's kind of building on my module part one, where I was evaluating where I wanted to go with my teaching. Then in module part two, I'm making quite a critical assessment of my own skills and where I think I have areas to improve. And of course, there were course tutorials for module two as well. And I can't remember if you had to do module one and two. I think you did. But if you do those two modules and successfully pass them, you can actually stop at that point if you want to and become an associate of the Higher Education Academy. Um, I think it's an associate fellowship of the Higher Education Academy. So maybe you are only doing a small amount of teaching. Maybe you're doing a little bit of teaching alongside researching at a university. You could maybe do those first two modules and then go, OK, that's enough for me. Um, I'll take the associate fellowship and it proves I've done an initial grounding in kind of educational research and best practice. But because I was a lecturer at the university um, and I was actually teaching during all of this, so I was already teaching classes as I was completing this training. But because I was a lecturer and I was on the career track and one day hopefully I'll become a professor, I needed to do the next two modules as well. So I had to tackle module three and module four. And on the course, they mixed us up. So I was now working with different academics on the course. Um, and for module three, we had to design a brand new module for the university, um, which is actually something I'm doing right now in real life as part of my job. It was quite a fun and useful experience to go through it as part of the course. Um, so I, as I said, I worked with a team of academics. We came from different departments. We had different strengths and weaknesses. And then after we designed the module, a key part then of this module three exercise was then to evaluate the module ourselves. So to look at maybe the assessment structure, to look at our learning objectives, to see how do we link things together properly? Was the course well timetabled? Um, and then we had to present our findings to the rest of the group. And then of course I had more course tutorials. So I was still continuing to work through different exercises in these tutorial sessions. And then very finally, we get to module four. So I was assigned a course tutor and I had to complete a personal research project. I needed to choose some aspect to do with teaching and then evaluate research relating to that part of teaching. And it was really interesting because it kind of brought together everything I'd learned from the first three modules. Um, as part of this training, you're learning all about the different research, I can never say this, pedagogical approaches in education. Um, yeah, it was just a really interesting way to bring that module together. And then you have the possibility at the end as well, if you want to, to potentially consider publishing the findings from your research project, if your course tutor thinks that maybe you could take that forwards and that's something to consider. And at the end of all these four modules, you then get a grade. So I did get a grade. It was a bit like being a student again. You know, you could get a pass or a merit or a distinction. And the key thing as well is once you've completed successfully all four modules, you then became a fellow of the Higher Education Academy. And so that is now what I can put on my CV and what I can put after my name. So those letters F H E A. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. You know, you are doing this course on top of your day job. 
So I was still researching, I was still teaching, I was still supervising PhD students, I was the senior tutor for placements at one point, then I was the admissions tutor. So all of this is going on at the same time as completing this course. But I think it's something that's really worthwhile doing. So, you know, should I ever want to change universities in the future, I can say that I am a fellow of the Higher Education Academy. As always, do leave me comments. You know, I am making a list of the video suggestions where people want to know more about a certain topic at university. So let me know if you're thinking about getting or have got an FHEA. Have a really good week. Stay safe. Look after yourselves. Um, like, subscribe. Ping that notifications if you want to know when the video is coming out. I try to always do it on a Monday at 10 o'clock, but you know, some weeks I make a mistake, like last week it went out early. So yeah, ping the notifications, then you'll never miss one of these videos. Um, and I will see you next Monday. Bye.